An organized and tidy inspector is more than just a luxury. It helps the user understand the function of the component, and it can also speed up the development when using a particular chunk of code. Odin's grouping attributes are a great help in organizing your inspectors and are much easier to use and maintain than a custom inspector script. If you open up the attributes overview window and search for group, you'll see several results for different group attributes, including tab groups, button groups, vertical groups, box groups, and horizontal groups. In general, using an Odin group attribute requires you to simply give a name to the group and then use that attribute on all the fields you want to group together. But the question of how to use groups together to make nested or composite groups has come up in a few places, and we want to try to answer those questions in this video. Now, it's common to want to create two columns in your inspector, but there's no column attribute in the Odin inspector. So to create those columns, we need to split a horizontal group into two vertical groups. Those vertical groups are themselves members of the parent horizontal group. And to do this, we need to first create a horizontal group attribute and give it the name base. There aren't going to be any fields in this group, which can look a bit unusual as the attribute appears to just be floating. Nonetheless, it works just fine. The next step is to add a vertical group attribute and give it the name base forward slash column one. The part before the forward slash tells Odin that it is a member or a child of the group base. While the part after the forward slash tells Odin that it is also part of the column one group. We'll copy this attribute to another field to add a second element to the first column. To create the second column, we'll add a vertical group attribute and give it the name base forward slash column two. And just like before, this tells Odin that it is part of the base group and also part of the column two group. With that done, we can let Unity compile and we can see the results in the inspector. The horizontal group is wrapping both of the vertical groups and each of the vertical groups are children of the horizontal group. Now, while this is working, we can make better use of the space in the inspector. So if we go back to the code, we can set the label width in the horizontal group to 80, like so. And then with one more compile, we can see that our columns are looking pretty good. Okay, we've got the columns working, but maybe you wanna make the group on the right a box group, and that's no problem. Composite groups work with box groups as well. We simply change the attribute from vertical group to box group, let Unity compile, and it works perfectly. Tab groups can also be used in composite groups. The tab group attribute can work with just one parameter, which gives the tab a title or a name. But if a second string parameter is added, then the first string will be the name of the group, like so. This doesn't change anything in the inspector, but if we add base with a forward slash to the group name, Odin will add the tab group to the horizontal group with the results looking something like this. You can also add subgroups to an individual tab. For example, we could add a box group to a tab. Now this can be a bit confusing at first as the tab group effectively already has two layers or two group names. So to do this, we need both the group name and the tab name plus a name for the box group, all inside the box group attribute. The tab group name goes first, then forward slash, followed by the tab's name, and finally, a second forward slash, followed by the name of the new box group. Once again, letting Unity compile, we can see the results in the inspector. Okay, so we've got columns and tab groups figured out, but let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated. And before jumping into the code, Let's take some time and break down the groups in the inspector. There is a base horizontal group wrapping all of the fields. That horizontal group is then split into two vertical groups, where the left vertical group contains the enemy name and a texture field. On the right, the vertical group contains a description and another horizontal group. This second horizontal group is wrapping all of the stats fields. And inside that horizontal group are two more vertical groups that each contain two stats fields. If we take a look at the code for this inspector, we can see that there are a handful of non-grouping attributes used, but we can also see how and where all the groups are defined. If you'd like to take a closer look at this script or any other script used in this video, you can find a GitHub link in the video description below. Hopefully this video has helped clarify how to name groups 
and how to use different grouping attributes together to create more complex structures in your inspectors. There's a lot more to talk about in terms of individual group attributes and how to use them. And if you'd like to see a video on a specific attribute, leave us a comment below or on the DevDog Discord. And until next time, happy game designing.